Attention, Georgia, Florida, the boys are coming south, baby. Hootie hoo! Grab the squad and come out and see us. Stand up comedy. Then we played a little AYG with the crowd. It's a good, good time. We'll see you there. The big man ain't lying. April 19th, we're going to be at the Tampa Theater in Tampa, Florida. Then we're taking it up to Atlanta, Georgia on April 20th at the Center Stage Theater. Get your tickets at rugarbage.com. We love yous. Hootie hoo! Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Oh, yeah. It's that little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find out if they grew up to be classy. Yeah. They're just a big old piece of trash. Trash, trash, trash. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a rainy day. We're out back here yep. at Tootie's in the new edition. She finally showed up from Europe. Okay. Customs dropped her off this morning. Nice. She has a shamrock tattoo on her left buttocks. Okay. It's infected. And a new husband named Declan. Good for him. So he's going to be staying with us for a little bit. Can't wait. I'm not calling him dad. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> My co-host is coming at you from across the table. This is what we call a family episode. Just the boys, the bozos, and the homies. He is the CEO of RU Garbage. He is an international businessman. And let me tell you something, folks. The next time you're reaching for a best pal, do yourself a favor. Make it a kippy. Give it up for Kevin James Ryan, everybody. Hey, what's hey, up, pal? <laughs> what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Payday's coming up. <laughs> I know, something, you're buttering me up for something. <laughs> Something's not, something ain't right. You bought me a pack of heaters. You're buttering me up for something, and I don't like it. Just trying to be I, a nice guy. I can see that coming trying a mile Trying to be a good away. friend. What's up, everybody? Pals, thanks, amigos. Thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. As you know, those numbers are. Schroeder up. Cooking, baby. Closing Cookin'. in on 200,000 subscribers over Woo! there. Ooh-wee. Shout out to the Army of Garbage. Love them. And then uh, we're gearing up for the Through the Roof Tour, baby. We the are. The new 2024 tour, and it's starting in... Uh, next week. Starting next week. Yeah, we got to get our fucking our, our ducks in a row here. We do. All new material. All new material from the specials. Um, no refunds, by the way. <laughs> no. Um, All new material not from the specials. Yeah. That's yeah. what I meant. Sorry. Um, it starts in... Uh, I'm... Starts in Charlotte, Charlotte which is sold out. Sold I apologize. Out. Nashville, sold, sold out. out. I apologize. Tampa, tickets still available. Grab Get them. them. They're at the Tampa Theater. Uh, and then we're going to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Hot Ticket, Atlanta. Tickets still available there. I also at another theater, so get those tickets, baby. Yeah. Are you garbage.com? How about a nice quick shout out to our producer, Extraordinaire, the old magic man. Makes us all look good. Works the ones, the twos, the threes, and the fours. He crosses the T's and he dots the I's. It's T Bone McMuffin, Toby McMullen, everybody. What up, boys? How are you, pal? I'm great, man. I'm excited to get back out on the road. Back out on the road with the tour bus. Yeah, we got a tour bus, gang. We told, we told the homies we got a tour bus just for the first run. The Break it even tour. <laughs> the, the losing money tour is what we're calling it. Uh, it's just because the flights, there's too many flights. The cities are all, the way the routing is, we've got to be zip-zapping all over. And they're like 10-hour drives and shit like that, which I ain't doing in a goddamn minivan. Plus, Declan just got here. He needs a job. He's our new bus <laughs> yeah, driver. he's the driver. Nice. Yeah, so it'll be a good time. Get those tickets. Are you garbage? And that tour bus is certified pre-owned. Oh, yes, it yeah. Is. They actually just switched it this morning. What? From the one I thought we were going to No have. hot tub? <laughs> no hot tub. I don't even think this no. No helipad. I don't think this thing has wheels, dude. <laughs> okay, we, we got the. It's a 1984 built line. No, it's not. It is an 84. Uh huh. They don't build them like they used to. Wait, you're joking? No. An 84. Uh huh. Be rolling down the windows. <laughs> Guess you could probably rip heaters. Yeah, in there. it's encouraged. Yeah, that's dude. crazy. I'm gonna be digging through the couch cookings for quaaludes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you got us on a 30 year old bus? A 40 year old bus? Is that? 84 was 40? I'm 86 and I'm 37. Jesus Christ, dude. Uh-huh. I don't have you on anything. The good folks at uh, busrental.org. <laughs> Man, they saw you I coming. I found it on Craigslist. Talk about a rope of dope. <laughs> Jesus. An 84? What? That's nuts. You got us a tour bus on Craigslist? The driver, no. that dr- the driver's going to be like, cash, or we can pay another one. <laughs> <laughs> or booty hole. <laughs> Don't look in the wheel wells, boys. <laughs> you want to see helicopters? I'll show you helicopters. Yikes. Uh, get on in, boys. We're riding dirty, and we're feeling flirty. <laughs> By the way, I got something. We to... get pulled up. Everybody playing fucking cool. He's <laughs> got a gun on us. Hope this guy doesn't try to be a hero. What the fuck? <laughs> I want a cowboy driver, dude. 
Uh, I got something local, uh, a little bit of a beef with the Philadelphia Phillies. Okay. I don't know if this came across your radar. You know what is no longer in existence? Oh, yeah. Man. Dollar Dog Talk Night. about ruining the season before it even got started. Yeah. Dollar Dog Night's been 86, T-Bone. Oh, why? Because the people of Philadelphia couldn't be trusted with a, a projectile that costed them four quarters? Yeah, Let's go to the weather. <laughs> Maybe. It's rain and mustard, It's baby. all money. It's crazy. Dollar Dog Those night. were, listen, in high school. They though, were Hatfield dogs, too. Those were the days we would go down, right? So it would be like. At seven, whatever, seven oh five games, seven ten, whatever sure. they are. Um, we would buy the cheapest tickets you could buy online. Sure. They were nine dollars, eight dollars, sure. something like that, just to get in. We pre get, we tailgate underage until you know the fifth inning, then wander in, load up on dogs, crush about, not even go to the seats, just crush about seven eight dogs. They were so good too. That Maybe little, get a beer, foil bag. Yeah. Maybe get a fake. If up. someone had a good fake ID, you could get a beer in a ballpark for about thirteen dollars. Like a gentleman. Uh, oh man, you felt you couldn't tell me shit. Drinking and <laughs> drinking in a ballpark <laughs> underage. Ooh, hey, you doing? Your, your boy going? It's from Michigan and it scans. <laughs> uh, a scannable ID back. In, I don't know. They, the, the ID technology's got to be crazy now, right? Kids still, I'm sure, make it work. Uh, but it's I'm, not I'm, that we condone that kind of activity here. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying it's got to be harder. But then I guess you have the technology to make it. You know what I mean? I got to tell you, Kip, it's been a while since I drank with teens. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> right, guys? I was with you all weekend. I don't exactly have my finger on the pulse, as it were. <laughs> no, I'm saying more from a technology standpoint. Because they got the holograms and all, all that All the stuff. hologram, the lasers. These kids, they got the 3D printers and shit. That's they what know I'm what saying. They so they, but they, and now everybody has more access to technology to make them easier. That's, my, that's my boy Trevor. He makes ghost guns and fake IDs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember when they first started using that, uh, that when the bouncer all of a sudden just had that uh, Walkman in his hand, and he would scan it. Fuck it, you mean jam up city? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Buddy, let me in. I'm trying to strike out in there. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? That technology hit in like 2001. You were 37. No, I was not. Nah, it's 2001. Sitting at the bar, drinking, going, oh, man, that would have jammed me up 90, about 20 years ago. No, nah, like 97, 98, I was 21, and they had it before that. Some parts started to have it before then. The scannables? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. I just remember... I believe so. <laughs> Not all. Uh, I would tell them, hey, th- when I'm handing it to, hey, don't scan. I went through the wash, which is a dead. Obviously, you're lying. You know what I mean? Ah, don't scan. A, a, the dog got it or I something. I just got back from Afghanistan. <laughs> it's 98. <laughs> Absolutely. <no. laughs> Three years before. I got we fatigues on. <laughs> you, you don't want to see what I saw. You weren't a union soldier. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you the right to deny me from this bar. Um. 19, you're right. They started scanning IDs in 1995. Yeah, I know I'm right, Toby. Gee, okay. Psycho. I know I'm right. I was banging really, back then. Guy's really mad about Declan. Popping E-bombs. <laughs> Getting loose. <laughs> loose as a goose. You are Tony Sarah Goose. I rest in peace, by oh, the way. Oh, man. The goose is loose. The goose was great. Um, what? Something came across my radar. Luke and I discussed this briefly uh, somewhere in Ireland. I can't remember. But a telltale sign. Of a garbage household growing up in the 80s and 90s. Drum roll. Toby hit him right there. Oh, yeah. Right there, baby. That was for sure. There was nothing that said trash. Like having one of those things sitting next to the ketchup and mayonnaise. Uh We are, of of course, referring to the squeezable lemon juice in the fake plastic lemon. Yeah. Which made a hell of a lemonade. But you got screamed at because you had to use the whole thing. For me, that was for, in our house, that was for cocktails. Cocktails? Yeah. Instead of a lemon or a lot, my, my stepdad would do <laughs> do an absolute tonic. Splash of Gatorade? <laughs> with, a splat, with, that, with that line. Really? That's, I've never, I just learned you could make lemonade with it. Yeah. I thought that was purely for cocktails. Man. Every bar, to every, every party <laughs> down the shore, really? that was on the bars. We just had one of those. In the fridge, the first one had to be there from the, the first 70s. twelve years of my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They lasted. Little dabble, do you? When it comes to them things, man. When you the just, lemon and the lime. When you just ne- never had the lime, only the lemon. When you discovered that, second you tasted it, you're like, yikes. Yeah, this needs a little sugar. Yeah, we were we were a big. I mean, I'd I'd be hard pressed to find out if there's probably one still in Denise's fridge right now. Sure, the le- the lime. Not the lemon. We used a different kind of lemon juice. Lime. That's cl- you did. Yeah, that's pretty classy. It was in like a ketchup bottle style. They're not a ketchup bottle, but like a 
a taller, skinnier squeeze bottle. Really? Yeah. Did Try guys, dyeing my hair with did it. Did you guys ever go so far as to class it up to, to have the like restaurant probably not ketchup bottle in the thing? What? Like the, the okay. glass one? No, the glass one? Ooh, what? No. Oh, my Prince Charles? What? It was red and had a white top and it had a it had a, a lid on it, a little baby lid that was connected to it. Oh, oh, like from the fifties? Yeah. No, we didn't have that. No. We had one left over from like a Labor Day party or something like sure, that. Sure, like a barbecue. They were like <sighs> big they probably yeah. Crusty. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. A little industrial, but like yeah. the squeeze bottle that you would have see like salad dressing in or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, never had that. That, that about 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 two two tablespoons of water would come out first before you got a drop of ketchup. Talk yeah. about ruining a hot dog, <laughs> man! Weird. That water squirt on the mustard and the ketchup. Nah, I, don't, Yikes. I don't know what I'm. A, everybody knows I'm a I'm a, I'm a I'm a plain dog man. Well, Charles dogged. Garoti. <laughs> we got to make Charles. But yeah, when Luke, when Luke 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 was the one that brought it up, I was like, man, I haven't thought about that. Twenty. Didn't years. we see a bar had it right? I don't remember. That's how it came up, I think. I think we saw a bar had it or something. But yeah, those things, that's that's 80s and 90s trash. Dirtbag shit. Oh, that's you know what that is? That's Cindy cooking up a little salmon. Give him a little really? splash. Are you cooking with that? Sure. <laughs> I don't think it's real. Ju- it's no. from concentrate. A yeah, little, little splash that's in a pinch? Crazy. Really? I don't think that's I don't think my mom's ever splashed anything with, with We didn't with have lemons lemon. in our house yeah, all, until all I was the- in college. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm positive. The, I'm t- the only reason we have limes is <laughs> corona and cocktails. Fruit fruit I swear to God, no other fruit comes in the crib. <laughs> my mom likes a little maybe 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 banana with her special K, but <laughs> other than that, it's strictly garnishes around my, around the the Sullivan Kelly. Did you apple. have did you have fruit like that in your house? We had fruit, but did you have lemons in your house? Like, did your mom cook with lemons? We had a bunch of olives. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bunch of cocktail onions. Oh yeah, it's like goddamn Sicily down there. <laughs> A lot of them little umbrellas. Wait, ask me again. Did I what? Did you have like lemons? We didn't. I, we never had lemons. Oh yeah, we always like had. That. We always had fruit and stuff. My mom's a really good cook, so she would mostly. But I saw that her. Makes sense. Uh, she, if when she hears this, she'll she'll text me and be like, "I would never cook with that." Sure. I saw her. Yeah. I saw her. Um, we were not a big fruit. How apples? We red were big, apples. We were we were good fruit people. My dad would stop at the. Uh, Italian market on when he worked uh, at the Philadelphia Naval Base, and he'd stop on a Friday and come gotcha. home with like a, a bushel of fruit, grapes, cherries. I mean, great, never, but I mean, never lemon, never citrus fruit like that. Now, nah, maybe a grapefruit in the cle- winter. Clementines when they were banging. Oh, those the, things by the crate hit of like them, thriller. I remember finding them one summer. The boxes, the, the wooden crate. Woo! Man, you felt like a farmer. I know you felt like a newsie or something. <laughs> <laughs> felt like I was on the Godfather. Um, the mail ended up in those things. Yeah, that I, dude. I and I'm still not sure what it is. I assume a fruit. But uh, I remember I went over to my buddy's house and he offered me guava juice. I was like, "What the fuck?" Did, we were in high school, like junior high. I'm like, "I'll do it." Fucking Dr. Pepper hit me with guava juice. It's like, dude, guava juice is great. So's passion fruit. I love all that stuff. I'll get sure. But I'm we not, never. I'm came not near it. it. But yeah, I might as well have been from Mars, dude. <laughs> is guava it, juice? Guava like the fake honey? It's no, like a honey alternative. That's agave. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, that's what they make tequila out of, I believe. I know. I ain't know it. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's man. funny. Yeah, those things are. Oh, fucking... guava juice. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm not a. <laughs> nah, I'm Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> can't have that shit. It's Lent, dude. I can't eat that. <laughs> yeah, I gave up guava. You know what's real nice though is a papaya, fresh papaya, with a little bit of lemon on it. Real nice. What's a papaya? Ah, right. The, the birds. The, the bird eats fruit that I don't. I ain't never even seen before. Dragon fruit. Yeah, dude. She's. So the Germans do uh, a white asparagus. What? Yeah, it nope. looks like a bushel of wieners. It is the most phallic thing in the world. She brought some home last night. I was like, yo, Tuts, this is a goddamn family building we're living in here. Patty last summer bought the, the tricolored carrots by accident. <laughs> oh, the purple. The- she brought that right down to the rectory. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Dude, these look like Slender Man's fingers. Dude, the one she has, I just had to, I just had to take them out of the package this morning. It's like a German Italian 
certain thing. It's like Benicula got after them. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're weird. I don't. That's uh, hey, we have two. It's, we have two separate sides of the fridge. You keep your voodoo <laughs> over there. All right. I keep my chicken tendies all over on this side. I like my asparagus green, uh, so I know where my pee smells. <laughs> um, you get that too? Asparagus make your pee that. smell? I wouldn't eat enough. I got, <laughs> I got funky piss every day of the week. Who am I kidding? Ooh. Who's kidding now? Yikes! This guy's a funky peer. He got pee in code red. Oh man, I. <laughs> <laughs> I peed this morning. I was like, I I need to drink water. This I, is it was it was. I pissed like Earth, Wind, and Fire, real funky. <laughs> I was hey, where you were going with that? <laughs> this guy's pretty good. I don't know what to tell you. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have to fake laugh at this one. I thought it was a Fifth Element joke. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> really? It was Earth, Wind, Fire. They were the other four elements. And then the the hot chick in the middle. All I remember about Fifth Element is, come on, my man. Really? Come on, come on, my man. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Chris Tucker. Anyway. Uh, I got one, too. I, I, T-Bone, I sent you something. This is more of a, uh, a, I don't know what. So there's a nice car in my neighborhood, a Corvette. In the Burbs or up, uptown? Uptown. Okay. And this guy does this in every parking spot. Huh. I, he puts a traffic cone in front and behind. Is that a nice car? It's a Corvette. I mean, it's an expensive. I'm not. I'm not a car guy, but a Corvettes. Corvettes are expensive, right? How come that don't get stolen? Go after your Kia. Uh, that's probably hard to. They're probably hard to. I mean, they're one hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars. A Corvette is a hundred ninety-seven, ninety-three, two thousand four Corvette, ninety-seven thousand dollars. Really? Some are yeah, obviously cheaper. But what's the? Well, that seems like a bit of a. That's like pretension. I don't know that's what that's a dick. Move. It's like if you're that worried about your car, put it in a garage. Put it in a garage. You got the money. You got a fucking ninety thousand dollar car. That's crazy. You, I, if you're driving that in, in the city, you're an asshole. That's a lot. That's a that's a lot of car. You got to be jamming up the bottom of that with the potholes. There's and the, speed bumps on that road too, because it's like a you know like the the humps. That guy's probably bottoming out. I know, scraping it all the time. Yeah, that's. I'm surprised those haven't been stolen. Plus, right, fuel injected machine like that, you got to keep the revs up. You can't do that in the city. Yeah, that's a that's a that's that's a like a doctor or something like that. You want your? I don't want my doctor driving a Corvette. You never see anybody cool usually driving those cars. There's always some old guy, some that's old American guy with gray muscle. hair. You know what I mean? Sure. It's never some hot dude. Maybe some bozo. Mm-hmm. Get a look at the guy. I'm just gonna stand there. <laughs> this is your car. It's always in the same spot too. I never know how those dudes do that. The Corvette to me is the the most classless vehicle on the road. That's a very Seinfeldian take. I like a Corvette. I don't like well, that one. Point made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a very like uh, it is. Isn't it like our answer to like the Ferrari and it's like our real fast car? Yeah, but they never really did anything. I don't. I don't think those cars ever like ran in the like the races or anything like that. I think like a Camaro and like what do they use for uh, NASCAR? Those are all. What do you mean? Like, aren't they Camaros and shit like that? I mean, no, they're all like custom made. Are they? Oh yeah. Huh. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. What's that? Oh, don't do this. This is why we can't have the monitor on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because he he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't have all the information. No, we see this is you can't you you you, you, you lost your privileges. You lost your <laughs> monitor Man. privileges. Yeah, I don't know. That's it's like a bit of a dork move. To, I, I don't know. It seems it's a little. It goes against the recklessness of having a sports car. Yes, I think. yes. Well, you got those in the trunk. I also think that guy wants you to see that. Yeah. Like if you got money for a ninety thousand dollar car, which is an insane amount of money to spend on a car. You got the money to put it in a garage. Do me a favor. Key it. Steal those. Wow. Get those in here. Get them in here. Yeah, steal them. They're not his. Hey, but he could have bought them, or maybe he stole them. But they're sitting but also- on city property. That's not a part of the car. That's a good point. The the Cor- I didn't know whose it was. It was left here. The Corvette is the the second fastest production car made in America. Yeah. There you go. What's the first? Uh, the Rossian Q1. That the hell is that? Thing. I don't know. It sounds like some company that made ten of these, and then yeah, no, I think uh, I I think like Seinfeld was saying that it's like a, it's like a gross. It is like like Porsche is the, 
you know, Porsche and Ferrari are like the the they're, they're, they're cappuccino, the artisanal, like the the fine. There's romance. This is like brrr, like we're fucking. It's Dunkin' Donuts. We're, we're yeah, we're loud. We're American, and let's fucking rock. Baby. The old ones were sweet though. The Stingrays, the one that had like the like the look like a shark coming out. Sure. Back in the eighties. I'm not a big car guy. I don't know anything about cars. Those dudes got laid. No, that bubble, that that rear bubble on the back window is awful. Yeah. Horrible. You know what's a sweet whip? Is Looks that like bad foreskin, and I would know. The car they made Jesus. in uh, Ford versus Ferrari for the Le Mans. Yeah. That, that thing was tight. Yeah. How come they never made those things? Zipping around with those. Nobody, I mean, I don't think like they're, I mean, it's like, it's like a rocket. What do you mean? Who's like, what the fuck? Dropping your kids off at school and that thing? I mean, there was one real rich. Steering wheel in the middle. There was one real rich kid in, uh, in our town, and he got a fucking Corvette for his 16th birthday. That's crazy. Man, he would drive that thing to school, pull up next to me in my 96 Chevy Lumina with the paint hanging off, dude. It was a tough look. <laughs> Finishing up a soft pretzel <laughs> before you hit the books. <laughs> Getting some protein uh, in you. Okay, let's talk about Factor. Shout out to Factor. Gang, stop stressing over what to eat and let Factor send you fresh, never frozen meals mm -hmm. that come straight to your door. We are big, big fans of... Over here at Tootie's at the Factor Meals, we all got our favorites. Mm -hmm. I like the meatballs with the summer squash, the little string, you know, the, the zucchini noodles. I'm a shredded chicken taco bowl man myself. Well documented. Got two in the fridge right now. Um, choose over. Uh, choose from a weekly menu of over 35 options that are created by chefs and approved by dietitians. It's real easy peasy. You go on there. Good, they got dude. everything. They got pictures of everything. There's no like, because I'm a weirdo when it comes to food. I like to see what I'm ordering. I like to see what it looks like. Sure. And they just got a picture. You go, oh, that looks good. That looks good. Bada bing, bada boom. You pick what you want out the door. Couldn't be easier to prepare. Just toss them in a microwave or on the stove for just two minutes and dinner is served, baby. Bang. Everyone's different. That's why Factor has created meal plans that are perfect for vegans, vegetarians, people doing keto, high protein, counting their calories, whatever you want. Head over there. So go to factormeals.com slash garbage50 and use code garbage50 to get 50% off your first box. 50? Plus 20% off your next box. God damn. That ain't bad. That's code garbage50 at factormeals.com slash Garbage 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Do it. Do it. Okay, let's talk about Manscaped. Manscaped. Listen up, gang. Our pals over at Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Mm -hmm. You gotta check the nuts. Do it in the shower. One man every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer cancer perform a simple routine self-check at home while enjoying manscape products you use every day now that's thinking right there They're good when you're cleaning up check the nuts mm -hmm. uh like with the lawnmower 5.0 ultra the dual led spotlights you'll achieve better visibility making every trim more precise and hassle-free waterproof with the wireless charging capabilities and a travel lock feature, this baby keeps your eggs smooth as butter, baby. Huevos. Uh, in addition to pro <clears throat> I'm sorry, in addition to providing the right tools and solutions for comfortable and easy grooming, Manscaped is committed to raising awareness and giving support to fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer because they're good freaking people. Mm -hmm. That's why they're donating fifty thousand dollars to the to the Testicular 50, Cancer geez. Society. Help save lives and balls by going over to manscaped.com slash TCS and sharing their funny educational check yourself video. Oh, well, baby, I'm listening. <laughs> and while you're at it, grab 20% off plus free shipping with the code garbage. That's code garbage at manscaped.com. Because like a famous American philosopher once said, take care of your mentals, your balls, and your chickens. Do it. That's neither here nor there, gang. We got a gosh darn family episode on our hands. When you sign up for the Patreon, we'll answer your garbage questions on the air. And oh, we yeah. got one, two, three humdingers today. Nice. Uh, this was one Christopher. First time, long time. You ever charge your phone outside? Oh, <laughs> that is a the jam. toughest of the looks. He said, felt like a real piece of garbage plugging my off-brand iPhone charger into the wall <laughs> waiting for the train this morning. Oh, dude. That's man. Tough. Oh, you got to do it. I, everyone's done it. Looking, f dude, looking for an outlet like a crackhead when you're at like, when you're either dead or at like 3%. It's not that bad anymore, but for a while, that was, that was like a part of life. No, everybody's phone was dying. Everybody. <laughs> right? Yeah. Everybody's phone was almost dying. 
Yeah, charging, 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 the owner of the goddamn restaurant has been in a position behind where, the bar. Where he's been out for eight hours and was like, fuck, my phone's dying. There shouldn't be a taboo. I agree it shouldn't be your job, but there should be no taboo. Behind the bar and the host stand, I think, are the only places you can ask. But a lot of people don't want to get involved in that because what if the phone I, gets stolen? I understand. I totally under, I, I understand all the negatives to it. But also, and also we're too, living in a goddamn society here. Juice me up. Let me ask you this. So I can check my Instagram. If you're a, <laughs> if you're a person. I'm a guy. That uses a lot of juice. I use a lot of juice. Okay. Lemon. Is it not your responsibility? Okay, so there's two different there's two, there's two different sides to this coin. There's you walking up to the host stand of the bartender with just your phone saying, "Hey man, do you have a charger?" Or the gentleman move is you walk up with the with the phone and your charger and say, "Hey, can I plug this in somewhere?" A hundred percent agree with that. You got to keep a charger on you. Not yet, but dude, every this is what I'm saying. Everybody's been in a position where you don't have a fucking charger. You're the most dead phone guy I know. Am I? Well, uh, you and Kibbe are close. I'm, I am up there. Yeah. I don't think so. Maybe you're a second to Kibbe. I seldom ever need a charger <laughs> from anybody. <laughs> the Johnny Tough guy. All of a sudden, it's a weird <laughs> hill to die. I never needed a charge, dude. My phone's always juiced. I'll tell you what the real the real hero for an urban charge is. Oh, urban charge. That's pretty good. That's my new movie. <laughs> uh, outdoor dining. Because they often will have the Christmas lights. That's just an extension cord, baby. Yeah. You're uh, plugging in? Buddy. Oh, I've, I've had. I've, I've dangled before. I charged a weed vape on the street not too long ago. Well, the homeless what? guys are charging up <laughs> yeah. places. A lot of the scaffolding the, in has. In New York, they have the charging stations. Where? They have those little things with, like, the video oh, phone. I don't go near them. Oh, of course not. I don't touch them with a 10-foot fucking pole. Um, but uh, there should be a thing, uh, and I understand it's not the restaurants or bars or whatever's responsibility, but we're living in a world where everybody could use some juice. There should be more power banks in a restaurant or a bar. Some, some of them have them. They used to. Remember they used to have them? You could, they would charge you for it? You remember? Yeah, I think it was like a dollar or something. Which yeah. I'd be happy if you're jammed up and I got to be out for a couple more hours or I'm waiting to meet somebody. What bar did we used to go to that had that? You put it in like a locker. Stand Up New York had it. They did. Yeah, those never yeah. really took off, though. Those like, yeah, you know. But a lot of places just have it like Brooklyn Comedy Club. You go into the bar. They got like fucking seven over there on the side. You oh, do they? Fucking plug in. Shout Let out it. to Brooklyn Comedy Shout out to Brooklyn Comedy Club. Yeah. Um, But there's got to be... Something's got to change here. We're just raw dogging, like, and it's like you, you got to go. Do you have a charger? It's like this is a business. You're running on tablets, iPads. Everyone's got an iPhone. Yeah, There's they have that for their employees for their uh, for their products. Yeah, I understand. It's that. not an Apple store. I'm not saying you're that. I'm buy, not asking to fucking buy a you're charger. You're going to buy a hamburger. Yeah, and maybe if you some want me wings. To, if you want me to buy, if you want me to buy two, three rounds of drinks, I'm going to need to charge my phone. <laughs> you want to upsell me? Get the fucking let's go. Um, no, I agree that it, I'm not saying it's their job. I'm saying as a society as a whole, we need to do better. Toby just charged his phone. I saw you making moves over there. <laughs> Running out of juice. Have they figured out the, um, what does the uh, uh, Android charger uh, hole look like? The mail thing. USB-C. So it's They're the, running on USB-C now too? Yeah. Not the not the way the iPhone looks with the little teeth on it. Oh, that's Toby dangling his charger outside or his vape. <laughs> that's outside. crazy. That's homeless guy shit. I, I know. We were outside of a show that didn't have a green room. So we were just like it was like old school stuck in the streets while the show was going on. That's your that's your uh, nicotine pen? No, it's weed. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. That is look the dude, that's trash. I know. God damn. Is I that know. graffiti on the inside of the building? Outside. No, that's like the that's the the hut. Oh, okay. It's the outdoor right. dining. Listen, I man. Confused. I'm domesticated these days, but I'm an alley cat at the end of the day. Bro. Sure. <laughs> I, we spent too much too much time in the streets, dude. Yeah. Now if I was move. if I was the restaurant manager, that would be I'm throwing you out. 
Well, here's the hey, thing. I don't think it. he wasn't even at the restaurant. Uh, of can't course kick, not. Can't kick me off public property. This probably that, used the bathroom too. <laughs> this was halfway down the block. I saw an opportunity. I struck. I pay my goddamn taxes. <laughs> Come on, bro. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, no, that's crazy. But listen, it's you, my juice, and I need it now. We're in an electronical world. Everybody's got two, three fucking electronics on them at any given time. Buy one of those packs. I, I'm, I listen. I understand that. I haven't had to ask a bar or a restaurant in a long time if I can charge. Never. I try to stay on top of it, but people are tour. You're in a city. You're in a different country. You, things fucking happen here. You got. Come on. What are we doing? It's New York City. You should be able to charge your phone. It's outside is a tough look. I, I will say this. There's those stations where they have the lockers. You know where you like can like pay money. Yeah. And then- and they'll charge it. Where'd you go? We yeah, just we talked just about talked that to, three seconds ago. I think he was ago. looking for his picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was, I was, that's my bad. Uh, Tell me just, more, Toby. You guys ever have that fake lemon juice? <laughs> to my deal bad. with that. My bad. Uh, no, those things, there was just a whole controversy about those where they were stealing people's information. Uh, I always worry about that when I get into an Uber and I ask for a charger if they could steal my, if they could get into my well, phone. Well, this is funny you, you ask that. If it's not there. Yeah. If there's not one in the back seat for you, do uh-huh. you ask to use theirs? Oh, always. That's you're, see, you're that you're not that far off. That's hey, like man, asking a, that's like asking a, a bartender or a waiter. No, that's part of the service. It's not a, no, it's not. Yes, it is in an Uber. That's not part of their your. It f- always says it on the back of the. In, not uh, all. First of all, not always. Let's let's. Well, that, that's not the narrative you're spending. In the that nice it's, Ubers, it's not one hundred percent. And a bottle guaranteed. of water and some hard candy. It's not one hundred percent guaranteed. Never touch those waters to though. use their charger. Huh? It's a it's a it's a it's a service they can extend if need be, but it's not part. You're not paying for that. I asked them. That's what I'm saying. You're asking somebody to charge your phone. Why isn't your phone charged? This is the same thing. That's not public though. That's that's a private thing between me and the Uber driver. It's a I private think. thing between me. We're and the, on the same. It's team. a private thing between me and the bartender. I mm. see he's got a charger there. You see he has a charger. There's there. not 50 other people in that Uber with me. It's just me and him. What does that mean? He's got 50 people a day. We're doing it in it. private. What, what You're does doing that it in public around other people. If I ask a bartender, that's between me that's and him. A, that's a safe space. You're just making this up. This I'm no not. Sa- what do you mean a safe space? Between you and the Uber driver. I have a safe space between me and the... Who cares if there's a guy 20 feet away? You know what I'm talking about, right? You yeah. feeling me on this? Well, uh, yeah. One's in public and one's in private. You're in pub. You're no, a private I, vehicle. I agree with Kippy. Yes. Bastard. But, but my you're, dude, you're paying for a ride, not a guy to give you a ride and charge your car. And you're I'm paying pay- for a hamburger, not to charge your phone. I agree. So you're you're on my in that situation. You're me. Okay, I see what you're saying. You're yeah. asking a guy whose job it is isn't to fucking charge your phone to charge your phone. I'm doing the same thing, but I'm a bad guy. Give that a give, just give that a Google Uber Black services offered. See if charge your phone comes up comes up. All right. That's one of the things. It says makes little men feel like big shots. Yeah. No, point to point travel with up to four passengers or request Uber Black SUV up to six passengers. There, that's it. That's it, huh? Yeah. I don't like the way you worded that. What? This is a setup set, set all the way. But, no. to, but to my point, I don't use random cables in Ubers because now. Can they do that? They have cables where in the bottom where it's just a little USB USB C part, there's enough space for them to put in a chip that will suck all your information right off your phone. Oh man. Like emails, all that kind of stuff. All of your info. Man. Picks? Yeah, it's you should. <laughs> hey, no, boy. Yeah, don't use those don't use those random charger stations. Hey, good luck with the Uber, Uber buddy. Oh, not random charging stations, but in an Uber? Uh, both. Fuck. But you'd be able to trace that back to the Uber. How? Technology, <laughs> lasers, uh, 3D printing, AI. I don't know. Man, that was a one-word KO, huh, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy's seeing guava juice. <laughs> I've seen videos of people at the drive-through. They, they when you give them a card, they'll take a picture of it on their phone. Yeah, card. Uh, my my credit card information just got leaked or breached. It's like <laughs> what? Uh, uh, I'm not living that fucking nuts. I, uh, you know, if something happens, it has you know. What, what, what are you gonna Amex. become a fucking lunatic and not? Uh, what? Uh, my phone's dying. I gotta go on fucking Twitter. I don't like using ATMs anymore. I always feel the thing. Oh, there you have it. And at 7 Elevens, I feel the. They, feel the 7 Elevens are getting caught left and right. Big. Because they're, in, doing yeah, that? they're individually owned, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're individually owned, so it's like 
Who's doing that? Is that you think that's the employees or is that just somebody coming in? Hey, what's that? And then they switch the thing. I think it's the employees. Damn, and the owners sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Because now, now they're gluing them on, so it's not the same thing where you just pull it off. A lot of times it'll be glued on now, so you can't even. It won't Gas come stations the too. You see people do it. Back to flip phones. Let's go. I'm in. Sign me up. Uh, all right, let's see. Back to the cues. This one's from St. Louis Broad. How are you? Ten dollar like dollar. Uh, is it garbage if your local head shop growing up was also a bait and tackle shop? You could get a bong on the one end and a cup of worms from the other. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, that's the Taco Bell KFC was making ways. This is fucking all time marketing. You guys had head shops in growing up? Yeah. Where? You uh, have to go to Philly for that. Philly, there was one in New Hope we would go to. This is like when weed was still illegal. Illegal. They just sold bongs and for tobacco purposes. Ah. And if you mentioned weed or Keef or anything, you got tossed. <laughs> we got tossed out of artifacts. On, I think it was on Cotman <laughs> Ave down the boulevard because we. my buddy goes, is that the one with the Keef catcher? And she's like, oh, get out! <laughs> I was like, buddy, we're 16. What are you doing? Here? <laughs> my buddy used to work at a head shop on Wilson and Montrose in Chicago, a very cracky area. Uh-huh. And I would go in there and, and hang out and watch him just fuck with crackheads all day. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good time. I remember very the first crack. Cracky area. That's pretty good. Uh, speaking of, this is very. The neighborhood's a little cracky. <laughs> it's coming up, though. <laughs> it's got a little more cokey. <laughs> there is some meth. It's nice. Um, speaking of leaving a dollar dog night one night, uh, we were going to, uh, we were going home. We stopped at a, a gas station down there in South Philly, like by the stadiums, like right by Tony Luke's. Mm-hmm. And um, Tony Luke Jr.'s. Tony Luke Jr., whatever it was or is. Uh, Fine There's product. a Sunoco right there in the corner. We stopped there. I ran in to get heaters or something, probably, you know. And um, the guy in front of me, I didn't know they smoked. They sold the, they sell the roses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the little glass tube at the bottom. And I just, I was a young whippersnapper from the suburbs. I didn't know, you know. And uh, they, um, there was a cop. It went like a crackhead, a cop, me. And the guy didn't want to sell the glass tube. She, the, the crack a woman came in and asked for a flower and he didn't want to sell it thinking like he was going to get in trouble because the cop was there or whatever. And the cops are like, just he's like, I, I can't I know mean, those aren't for sale or whatever. And the crack is like, just fucking, you know, she already had she already had the rock. So she was fucking sure she was chomping the at clock's the clock's ticking. Dog. He was chomping at the bit and this been guy there. This fucking this attendant wasn't playing ball <laughs> and she was not having it. Fucking act like you don't know me now. So the cop. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. My mouth is not numb at all. <laughs> it to be the, and the cop went, just give it to her, man. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm fucking, she's carried out of the store. And I went, I literally asked. I was like, what was that? First of all, I was drunk. I was like, what was that? all about the cop goes they use the little glass tube at the bottom said, that's great ah. you're 16 drunk <laughs> smoking crack hey you believe that shit <laughs> hey, hey lady hold up what do you got <laughs> you run out of the store <laughs> let me get five on that <laughs> Ew. um yeah well yeah we had uh there was a couple uh they were like t- tough to get to though like you never knew they were like artifacts was a big one that was the one in in the north in northeast philly that was like s- stand alone the rest were like in the back of a record shop or fucking. Yeah, I don't remember having anything like that anywhere in the burbs. I don't remember where people where we got our bongs. I feel like some of them were ordered, made. Yeah, I would say out of the back of magazines next to the X-ray specs. Yeah, shit like that. We would make making bongs was yeah. One of the make- funnest. I say we would make X-ray specs. <laughs> 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 Making bongs was an all-time Real cool thing. Cool dudes. All-time thing. Sure. PVC pipe. PVC pipe. Start melting. You got a cap. What's the cap going to be made out of? Yeah, it was always that part that killed you where the thing went in. You had to put, like, putty or something. The joint. It. Yeah. Yeah, we used caulk. We, they, were, they were building the houses by us. We were fucking... <laughs> Bubble gum. Works in a pinch. Sure. Or what you really want is a real light melt on the side of your water bottle. Light melt. Sure. Pin, you just slide it through. Yep. Nice seal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get any? any? I, was, I mean, that's disposable bongs. Oh, sure. Did any of your dads, fr- uh, did any of your friends' dads have a, such a sophisticated workstation where they had a soldering iron? My one buddy did. Yeah, we did. My you dad did. did. Yeah. No kidding. Like that little, the needle. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, that, yeah, I mean, we had it, I mean, you know, in a construction company, so the girl, there was everything, there was like a fucking welding machine and a fucking, like, <laughs> you know, soldering torch and stuff. I never told you that story. I had to make a, I had to make Saturn or something, and it was due the next morning, 
And I was like, I like came to him and I made it's him all steel. I made him like solder. I had a thing with the rings, but I needed to get like the beads on it or something. And I remember it was an all time moment I have with my dad in the garage. He's got the soldering iron because we had to like cut these rings, these metal rings, and he mm-hmm. was going to solder them back. So he's got not the soldering iron. He's got the torch. So like, have, a, like a welding torch. Yeah, but like a, to- a soldering torch is a, it's like a different temperature. So it's just like a big blow torch kind of. And you have the sure. soldering wire. And you, like, meld it as it goes, like how you would do, like, a copper pipe or whatever. And, man, he lit a cig off the torch in the garage. And I was just like, man, you are a renegade. I was probably, like, seven years old. So he's got a cig in his mouth, and he's soldering rings of Jupiter for me for, like, my third my third grade project. I was like, this dude parties. I got to get a thing of munchkins, too. <laughs> yeah. He's like, why'd you wait till the last fucking minute? I Hell al- of a joint, though. The guy could solder. I always thought. That that would be. There's no way that teacher thought you made that. Oh no! <laughs> I bragged. I was like, my dad soldered this. It was the specification. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was gonna be. If I ever wanted to do anything with my life when I was a kid, from like watching TV shows or like the smart kids that made those things, like maybe like you know like some of my brother's friends that were smart that did those, and then when it got to my my turn to do that, whatever grade that was. I always wanted that to look really good. Mm-hmm. They went to Michael's. They got the stuff. They took the weekend and did it. Yeah, no, never. Never. They never, just never did it. Never cared. Those things looked so cool. When they were done right, man. You see it on the bus. or they, People oh. were getting dropped off because they couldn't take it on the bus, whatever it was. Ah, Jimmy's dad's dropping them off because he's, see him walk, it's like under a trash bag. I just or remember whatever. thinking, like, I put that in a table and I play with my spaceships with it flying around Jupiter. Never. Mm-mm. I don't even know if I ever made one. I think I had like three planets or something. I vaguely remember some argument, same thing. Wait until the last minute to do it, get yeah. screamed at. You just Ralph Wiggum, dude. Oh, brutal. Covered in paste. <laughs> Eating worms. Eating Saturn. It's an apple. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, if we were that guy, we wouldn't be us now. We'd be a fucking... True. We'd be an accountant or something somewhere. You know what I mean? I'm the kind of guy whose dad lights cigs off a soldering torch. That's who I am. That's what I care about. Uh, all right, this one's from Ryan. $10 homie, never had one read. Are you garbage if you met your husband on a radio station dating show and married him and divorced him two times? The second time was when he was in jail. Whoa. God damn. I always thought those what? radio dating shows were made up. What happened to Doobie Brothers tickets? <laughs> Uh, I always thought all that radio stuff was like produced. Uh-uh. A lot of that was though, like okay. all that War of the Roses. War of the Roses. Yeah, I don't remember. You know that. War of the Roses? It's a national. I mean, it's like they call if like the husband thinks if the wife thinks the husband's cheating on him on her, she calls into the radio station and they do War of the Roses. It's called, and so the the radio show will call. They set them up. Yeah, and they go, "Hey, this is so and so from fucking Tri State Roses." You've won a free thing of roses. Who do you want to send them I to? I feel like you've told me this before. Yeah. That's pretty good. I don't remember that. I think uh, yeah, comics do it. They used to do it as a gig. I remember the pranks of, it's like you just got got by <laughs> the yeah. stooge. I remember the, the wife or the husband pranking the, the other one at work. I remember those. I don't remember that. I think they were a lot of them were set up. I think. I don't okay. know. Now, now knowing what you know about showbiz, don't you think it'd be produced? Sure. I'm like, let's just get. We'll give two people 25 bucks sure. for 10 minutes of their time. Toby's British. <laughs> and that. And that. And that. It's all right. Um, yeah, that's uh, nah, anything radio was never good ever, I feel. What do you mean? I loved it. Calling in. I'm saying calling in, going to the concert. Uh, it was not the classiest behavior. I love that stuff. What? Get some of that going. Calling some type of contest for some tickets or something like that. Have you? No, but I used to enjoy listening to it. Yeah, I'm t- on my yeah way of to course. School. Listening to it, I'm saying doing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's trashy. Sure. <laughs> the guy was in jail. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean anything. It could have been a fucking setup. A white-collar for, crime. For all I know. Gang, this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Mm-hmm. If you're constantly giving to others and neglecting yourself, it may seem like the right thing to do. Yes. But it's not. Nope. It's going to wear you out. Beat you up. Beat you up and wear you out. Online therapy through BetterHelp, can teach you how to make yourself a priority. Mm-hmm. I'm number one, dorks. <laughs> Take that, losers. You're first, you're last. 
Uh, yeah, you'll learn positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, and how to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for people with major trauma. That whole stigma is gone. Whatever you're going through, BetterHelp can help you. If your job, relationship, stuff with a family member, a neighbor, whatever it is. Coworker. Someone the hell is that supposed to be <laughs> oh, wait. uh I, i've said talk therapy as a tool as a whole is fantastic it helps you clear your mind just get a different perspective get stuff off your chest instead of keeping it all bottled up bouncing around in there you turn into the big man and no one wants that mm-hmm. better help is 100 online and suited for your schedule just fill out a quick questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you'll be on your way you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Hmm. Learn to make more time and what for for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Garbage a Day to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Garbage. Do it. Do it. Uh, this one's just funny. $10 homie, yo mama. Is it garbage to eat a daily donut with your daily multivitamins? The pills are big and I don't want heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's great. Donuts give me super heartburn. They don't fill me. I'm more of a carb man. I need to. I need a big. That is a carb. Nah, it's more sugary. That's a carbohydrate. A donut. It's all I'm carbs. Not, I'm not saying it's not. It's not. It's not a bagel. What are you? Protein donuts? <laughs> it's not a bagel. I'll tell you that much. I need a real. I need a nice base to start the day. Donuts dissolve into thin air. They really do. You put them in your mouth and they just fucking they disappear. You know yeah. what I mean? God, Could I, never have just one donut. I know. Me too. Every time I have, I made six and I puke. Yeah. Krispy Kreme, when they hit, man, those glaze, good night. The thick, dense, uh-huh. and weight to them. I love watching them make donuts and bagels, <laughs> like on, like, TV shows or when whatever. They, when they flip them. Oh, that flip is, when they come out, they come out of, like, a big belt and <laughs> dump into the water. Dude, the, 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 the bagel ovens that are the shelves that rotate. Oh, man. I always horrible. feel like when they glaze them, or, like, when, when you see the videos of, like, when they're making, like, candy... Like they're wasting so much chocolate. I just thought of the the I I saw that's got to go back into something. It was uh we were talking about it. Peter Pan donuts. Yes, right. That guy was making and the sun's making. I saw the sun has taken over or whatever. If you're ever in Brooklyn, um, do yourself a favor. Sam Talent brought us something. Yes, from there. he did. And they were I guess that's we were what we were talking about. It. I saw the video and the amount of glaze they were using. I'm like, that's just going right down the drain. I, I think did. it probably funnels back into a. a it looked thing. like it was hard and like it's like yeah, you got to hit that at the right time. That's like a. Hey man, it's like trying to thread the needle. It's the price of doing business. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got to get off the internet when I hear glaze. I I don't even think like glaze on a donut. I just think of people like over complimenting people online where they're like, oh, you're glazing him. I don't even know what that means. I thought you, meant, I thought you were going to go thought pornography. Meant, I thought you meant pottery. Well, that's what the inference is. Gotcha. Oh, you're really glazing you're that blowing guy. blowing him. Yeah. Hmm. Gotcha. I like that. Man, uh, something, uh, my algorithm changed. I get hot chicks doing pottery now. You seen those videos? No. They ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an ashtray? <laughs> no, nah, they're all... I uh, ain't talking about Seth Rogen They're either. all pencil holders, if you catch my drift. Everything everything they're making. Something erotic it's about It's girls in, with no bras. I'm like, you know what you're doing. Making vases? Wasn't that in Ghost? Yeah. I think that might have been my first hard on. Steve <laughs> Swayze? Got you. Yeah. Way before Blue Chew. That was the original BC, baby. <laughs> Woo! Ooh, a young Demi Moore and a young Patrick Swayze. Mm-hmm. Man, I fucking love Swayze. He was all right, dude. The coolest ever. He could do it all. Got me to jump out of an airplane, that guy. Said he did that shit all on his own. Yes. He filmed it after. Yes. Because they wouldn't let him do it. Yes. Crazy. The, in, the instructor said he's never seen someone so natural in the air. He would be like a Tom Cruise if, if he, if he would have lived, right? He would have been Patrick Swayze. True, but he would be doing like he would be he'd be operating on the cruise level. He would be doing major vehicles with crazy stunts with him actually doing them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was also a song and dance man, uh, which but, would ma- made him e- even more of a threat. Talk about glaze, huh? Whew. Man. <laughs> he said we get some pottery and get out of here. Huh, boys? <laughs> what was the movie? The dancing movie? Dirty Dancing. Yeah. Oh, man. He was something else in that. Mm-hmm. Hachi machi. From the wrong side of the tracks. You know what I'm saying? Sure. He wasn't checking IDs. No. <laughs> He'd throat, you know. <laughs> Roadhouse. <laughs> uh, all right. This one's from T-Bone Army Grunt. I don't get it. Uh, are I you- like it. He's a grunt in the T-Bone Army. Gotcha. Okay. Um, a private, if you will. Okay. 
Are foot you, soldier. Which is the only rankings we have. <laughs> <laughs> so we're for the common man. <laughs> Over here, T-Bone Army. There is no hierarchy. Except me. <laughs> Are you ready for the chillest war of all time? <laughs> Uniform. Let's You're wearing skate it, team, bro. <laughs> Boy, you better grow that hair out. <laughs> <laughs> Soldier, where's your mustache? <laughs> Drop and give me 50 milligrams of it. <laughs> Are you garbage if you graduated in 2016, but your high school basketball team still ran out to jump by Van Halen because they never bought a new tape? Nice. That's, dude, 2016 <laughs> coming out to Van Halen is crazy. That's... As a hit, that's what it was. That's 30 years? Right? Jump, 1984 was the album that it was on. Was, yeah. So was, Jump was on the 30, album 1984. I don't know if it came out in 84. Can you get a year on Jump by Van Halen? It was, I was, either, it was either 83, 84. It's got, I mean, if you're naming make, an album 1984 and it comes out in 87. I don't know. Those guys broke know. the rules. Sure. Uh, 1983? Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. That's fucking. I had that. It was an angel. It was a baby angel smoking a heater. On that's the pretty, cover. That's pretty oh, cool. Oh, man. It was a noise. And he was like looking back that way. So Baby smoking meters is pretty cool. That had Panama on it. Jump. I never liked. They were too. A lot, of, a lot of Corvettes got crashed to that record. Yeah, dude. Ooh. There you go. You want to talk about Corvettes. How you doing? Uh, yeah, I never. It was never edgy enough for. What? Eddie Van Halen? He was slaying. I was that not edgy. I mean, he's a great guitar player. You I mean, think that was edgy? Panama has one of the... Yeah. I've heard it, guys. <laughs> All right, let's take it from the top. That was pretty good. <laughs> I think I'm pretty... No, but it compared to, like, Ozzy... Mr. Guar it was, it was, over they, here. That was hair metal. To an ex- compared to Ozzy no. Osbourne. Compared to Black Sabbath? I think it was right there. Are you talking about 70s Black Sabbath or 80s Black Sabbath? 70. War pigs? I'm, you gotta, I'll give you, you that. You got you to gotta think, I'm not experiencing this as it's coming out. I'm looking back and going like fucking war pigs or jump yeah, as a rebellious as, as team. Far as, as far as hardness. Yeah, edginess. I'll that's give what you I'm that. Saying. Oh, that's Ozzy Osbourne and Spirit Halloween shit. No. Not then. Not then. War pigs? Yeah, that, that Black that Sabbath was that hard was, as fuck. was nuts. And ahead of its time, to be honest. Very, with you. very much so ahead of its time. Yeah. Listen, I, I love the Sabbath. Don't get me wrong, but they're not hard. It's crazy, like a band like that. You listen to, it and you're like, there Mist-. was no mis- There was mystery to War Pigs, or as like those a, guys were scary. As a third, as a twelve year old who's who's learning rock music, Jump by Van Halen or War Pigs. I. I'll give him that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even I, up for debate. There was, a, there was an edge of danger of the band. Of scare. Of like, I heard they did this. I heard yeah. not, like, they're not running around in tights with their wieners. You know? <laughs> nice wieners that they <laughs> were. Be, be that as it may. I'm just saying. No, I, I'll give you that. Thanks. It's true. I was, in my head, I was thinking Panama. <coughs> what do you mean? I wasn't thinking Jump. Jump's a little cheese. No, yeah, so they, I was. They, 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 stop getting crazy. Jump is not cheesy. Panama is not cheesy. Jump's cheesy. No, it's not. Stick to jump. 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 <laughs> Come, Come on, dude. dude. <laughs> what? Well, David Lee Roth did one of those. One of those dude, splits. They're dressed up as ladies they running look, around the stage. They look like an aerobics How class. Dare you? No. What the fuck are we doing? How dare you? They listen. I see what you're saying. Thank, that's all I'm saying. But let's saying. not start getting crazy. They saying were they cheesy. Were, no, they weren't. I'm not saying they were bad. Eddie Van Halen. Those guys got laid. And melt someone's face. Who? Yeah, he would. I believe he's a Bucks County resident as of now. Uh, Eddie Van Halen. He passed away. Oh, he was. A couple years ago. Rest in peace, Big E. R.I.P. One, one of the goats. <laughs> Didn't use a pedal. Really? Did that all on the guitar. He would turn the amp up so much, and he had so much control over the guitar that he could just, like, make that sound. Wow. What I believe. I, th- I believe that's the case. Um... But a lot of mystery behind that. To go back to your, <laughs> to go back to your point, what was it? Black Sabbath, even Pink Floyd. There was older kids that smoked heaters on the bus when I was in seventh and eighth grade that would wear Pink Floyd T-shirts. And I this is before I heard Pink Floyd. I didn't start listening until I was in high school. Yes. And I remember being like, you know, those black T shirts, they were faded and You weren't uh, afraid of guys listening to Van Halen. You were afraid I of guys was listening to Van Petrified of a guy Floyd. in a Pink Floyd. I, a I didn't Sabbath, know what it yeah. was. There's something. But then edgy you listen to it and you're like, Jesus Christ, this is unbelievable, complicated, Stinks. beautiful music. Pink Floyd, you don't like Floyd? Kid, Jesus Christ. Hey, relax, will you? Hey, Billboard. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cream <laughs> magazine over here. What the fuck? <laughs> Creaming in your pants. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I'm not... Uh, just, I'll give you a heads up to your uh, props to your boys. How about fucking Limp Biscuit rocking that show not that long ago? Oh yeah, Woo! they rock. Had to I mean, they rocked. were corny, but they they knew how to work a goddamn crowd. Had to play. This was like a couple weeks ago. They, they seem like they're having the time they're of their lives. Fun. They're Dude, out there love having to see fun. It. They've weathered the storm of being dorks or nerdy and all the bad. When were they dorks or nerdy? That was, I think, from uh, they really leaned. I in. thought that was like your Nirvana. Your generation. No, I think when they came, it, they, it did get, they were mostly rock-ish with like a little hip-hop influence, and then he went more hip-hop. There was a bad part of music in the early 2000s where that hip-hop rock kind of blended, As and not happens. in the best way. Sure, I got you. You know my, what I mean? My buddy went and saw them maybe two years, two, three years ago, and he called me at like one o'clock in the morning. Like four or five of our boys all went. And he was like, uh, he was like, dude, I had to call you. I want you to know we went to the show as a joke, and it was legitimately one of the greatest performances yeah. I've ever seen in my oh, life. I love that. <laughs> Those guys kill it. Yeah, he was like, it was unreal. It was, yeah. it was so fun. I think the genre jumped a little bit with like that, like crazy town, like all that stuff got real kind of butterfly cheesy. Shout out to Swifty. I think that was. Oh my thing. god, Fred, hey. come on the show, hit us up. How fun would oh, he be? I love Fred. That was one of the first albums I. What was that for three dollar bill, y'all? Three dollar bill or two dollar bill? Three dollar bill, y'all. First album I went with my dad. That was when Faith dropped. There, that that's what popped them. Their remix of Faith. Yeah, we get Wes Borland on here, just sit silently, weird everybody with, out with pain on his face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that guy scared me. That was scary. Yeah, <laughs> he had contacts. In, oh, yeah. oh yeah, he he, was, he knew how to fucking work a camera to freak to freak me out. I did not listen to that music by myself. I made sure I was in, I was in a well lit room <laughs> with a couple of buddies and a parent home. <laughs> that guy he gave pussy. me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> that's what you need, though. I, I, that's why I loved them. You know, that Van Halen wasn't scaring me. <laughs> oh, that's all right. God. That's funny as shit. Um. All right. Let's see here. Man, that was a that was a very that was a very big discord of yeah. uh, 80s, 80s, 70s, 80s, and start? 90s music. Head jump, the head shop. That come from the head shop <laughs> question. <laughs> How did we get there? Oh, the radio, the station. radio show. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, look at that. And yeah, that's trash. Is it garbage to live on a golf course? Disc golf course. That is. My father-in-law bought a summer camp, and the first tee is partly in my new driveway. That's a lot to unpack. But you're living on a sun. Imagine buying a summer camp and like making it your home. If you just have the I, the way I picture it, it's an old summer camp. And you bought the land. And you bought the land, and it's still got the huts and the cafeteria. And and the mass murderer. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. That would creep me out. The West Borland coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Slipknot off in the distance. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I dig that. That would be fun though. They did that. Uh, I'm always weary of those. What? Because you, well, you worry about what happened there. Somebody got got murders. Or maybe they just went out of business. Or the maybe. guy, they, you know, the guy retired and his son didn't want to take over the family yeah. summer camp. I don't know. That would be. F I'm saying if you went out with a crew, I wouldn't want to live there by myself. No. But if you went with like a crew of like 20, 30 the fucking old greenskeeper walking around, oh. with it. <laughs> he, he was murdered 10 years ago. <laughs> what? Yeah, no. I had beers with him last night. <laughs> <laughs> Playing tummy sticks. Seemed like a nice old guy. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't like any of that stuff. I'm just saying it would be fun to like if you and the boys, if that was like a weekend away, it was like a summer camp type thing. You had a lake with some canoes. There was a kit. You had like a communal style cafeteria for food. I would live in an old mall. I would buy an old mall and make that my house. I'd be cool with that. Mm hmm. No, there's nothing scary about a mall. Dawn of the Dead. What do you mean? Malls are very scary at night. Dawn of the Dead. Is that, I didn't see the film. Really? Zombies? Mall full of zombies? Is that Simon Pegg? Yeah. No, that was Shaun of the Dead. Uh, okay. And then there was uh, the original George A. Romero, Dawn of the Dead from the 80s, and then it was remade by Jack Snyder, his only good movie in the early 2000s. It's awesome. Okay. All right. Very critic-y this episode. I like it. Um, I just watched a... I've never watched a Mr. Beast video. That guy's great. 
He's the yeah. I mean, I always liked him. That's, hey, thanks for checking in, cue ball. <laughs> Can maybe, may, maybe the last human being on Earth to see one of his videos. I know. It's like you and my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we watched so, it together. So it. Hey, guys, pretty. No, good. I actually like watch. Obviously, knew what he was doing. The guy's doing nice things. Have you seen this, Patrick Mahomes? <laughs> no, he's a really good football player. I can't believe I like you his, just said that. I like his brother dancing more. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I watched the whole video. I skimmed, but watched a good amount of it. You say you want to live in it. He bought a supermarket and made a guy live in it. Fully That's stocked. Awesome. I, that was, He's the leader of our industry. He gave him $10,000 a day, every day. How long did he make it? F- almost 50 days. So that's 500 grand. Yeah. Woo wee. But he had to turn around every, to get the $10,000. He had to take $10,000 of merchandise out of the store. So and he do what well with it? He had to. So, like, it's a fully stocked mm-hmm. supermarket, but in order to get to $10,000 cash, he's got to give $10,000 in groceries. Uh, oh, give it to people like charity? Well, he's got to give it to Mr. Beast, then he turned around and gave it to everybody. Ah, gave it to charity. Right, yeah. That dude's awesome. But it was, like, the strategy of, like, okay, well, I don't need a grill. Like, what do I need? So then you start, you're know, like, well, the produce is going bad, that kind of thing. That's pretty good. 10 G's is a lot at a grocery store. Unless you're me. <laughs> Call it a light afternoon snack. <laughs> Stay in there for three years. Yeah, how long could you go? Live in a grocery store? Oh, man. Um, it's funny you mention that. I, the, what gets you, and obviously, the jokes are, you know, what I, I think you'd eat all the food in about 48 hours. But Well, here's the thing. I was thinking. You go crazy. You're stuck in the same place for 50 days. You go nuts. I was thinking about this this morning, actually, because we had gone to Trader Joe's. Um, Sunday or whatever. I can't remember. A couple days ago. Because we were in the city and we needed some stuff for dinner and breakfast and all that stuff. I took a nap in the frozen food aisle, woke up and was like, I could live here. Well, that's the thing. It's what grocery store would you want to be trapped in? And Trader Joe's is pretty up there for me because they're just like the stuff that they have is so good. All their stuff is good. They put stuff together well. I'm not a... Sorry to cut you off. I'm no. not a Trader Joe's guy per se, but don't they only have really Trader Joe's stuff? They do, but they're can you get their creative department of like their I, I don't even know how to like. But you're a man of you're a man of of routine and things you like. You're not going to be able to have your Dorito. I'm making a Dorito, but like you're the, missing out on all your normal brands. The, what I'm saying is Trader Joe's is the one place where I can do that. Like they make these little they make these pizzas that aren't pizzas. They're like like. I'm like listening. Galets or something like that they're called. And it's like a, more of a pastry crust. And they have like bacon and uh, onions and stuff like that. They're unbelievable. Their frozen food section is pretty unbeatable. Mm-hmm. It's it's very good. But here's where, here's where you're going wrong, Hank. The average Whole Foods has a very small footprint, small store. The frozen food section's maybe one aisle. You need like a what you you don't want to go Whole Foods because it's too fancy. It's not a variety. Whole Foods is whack. You got to go somewhere like a Wegmans. I'm with you on that. Or or even I would say like a Shoprite. I think you. Get I go more, Shoprite I or th- Acme. I think you get more longevity out of it. Yeah, you Cause, would because because there's more there's more shelf stable products in there, like a lot of snacks. You could what I would do. I would I would make all my money on the on the alcohol. You get rid of all that shit. Yeah, but not all of them have alcohol. That's the uh, problem. It's state to state. Uh, yeah, if you're going, I was thinking ten. You can get ten thousand dollars a day at booze. Easy. I saw in L.A. I wasn't talking about that. I was just talking about if I was stuck in a grocery store, which grocery store would I want to be stuck in? I know for the fifty ex- days. I know the exact for whatever. I know the exact post apo- the, the, the the apocalypse happens. I think I think it's too small. Those Trader Joe's. I, I I was I wasn't married to it. I just it, <laughs> I'm just it, fucking it, her. It started spinning. It started spinning in my mind this morning. Nothing about the Mr. Beast yeah, or the course. contest. I would go. I would go shop right. I'd go some. I'd go a middle. A middle thing that has some of the higher end nicer stuff and also a lot of my um, uh, my comforts. And I think what the answer to that is currently, if I'm not mistaken, right now, the industry leader is a Wegmans. That's a little too fancy, I think, for the for the, uh, they're the industry leader in fancy, nice things. But I think the, they would have the biggest, the best, the most but, highest technology ones. I don't even think they have everything that like you would like Wegmans. Oh, Wegmans. They're a little more now, I think. That's a that's a blue collar grocery store with with, with the no. with, with with a nice vibe to it. Unless I'm wrong, 
which I could be, but Elevated. they're they're yeah, they're fancy. The, no, no, no. They 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 straddle the line in a real nice way. Yeah, you, they okay. straddle the line. Get, you can get your okay. Doritos, your your sugar cereals sure. and such, but then a nice like in house queso that they make. I like that. Okay. Yeah. I'd and still, go, I'd still go. That's a. I wouldn't feel comfortable. I'd feel like I'd feel like I'm. Uh, you want to be in an Acme from '83? Yeah, I want to. I, I know the exact Acme I want to be in that I grew up going to. <laughs> Yakimi. Just give me one deli guy. They, I'll be all they, right. I need a deli guy, or at least, at least turn to show me how to turn a slicer on. <laughs> 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 they got a Starbucks. They got. They do sell some booze. They got nice. Hot, I'm you, act, you would I'm, never I want be able to figure out that coffee machine. I want a deli guy and I want a uh, I cashier with an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's gonna be broken in 45. minutes. They got minutes. a coin star. If I get if I get if I get jammed up on cash, I crack can, it into that thing. I could get liquid real quick. They got heaters. They have a bank. Most a lot of them have a bank. A lot of in them there. have a bank. They got some cash. They got scratchers. Oh, that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Even though you can't, can't win cash anything. them in, yeah. but hey. Oh, for the love of the game, sure. Baby. Yeah, I will say this about Trader Joe's: it's the one grocery store no one should ever steal from. No, all the employees got that blade on them. Where they do? Oh, uh, they all got the yeah. I fucking plus hate that. It's so cheap. Get out of here! I fuck Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's. I like the people that work there too. Though. They're all great. Hawaiian shirts. Goodbye. Yeah, they know what they're doing. They really care. It seems they don't care. <laughs> plus, I've said this before: they they make a uh, chocolate covered caramel that is just. Whew. Man, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Quality place. Sure. All right, we got time for one more, and then we got our wrapper up here, gang. Uh, this one, I'm not even... Sh this is from FN Photography. This is just weird. Is it garbage if your father-in-law... Is it garbage for your father-in-law to message the Airbnb host you paid for without telling you so he can show up early and get the best bedroom. Oh, Jesus. That's true. Who's his father-in-law? Yeah. Yeah, I hate that. You can't. You're in a, I mean, that's a trash. That's a that's a skeezer move from my. But also, like, don't you tend to. I don't know if I was checking in with my, let's say, my in-law. Like, say I bought a place in the, my fat, whatever. I'm having family come over. I got a place. We're all going to fucking Long Island or something. Okay. Or down the shore, right? You can stop by for the night. We're have a barbecue. You can come by. Me? Yeah. Thanks, pal. Um, I'll stop at Trader Joe's before I get there. And uh, if I got, if I paid for the place, I would defer to the guest and to elders to be like, where are you, you know, what room do you guys want? Sure. That's what I would, I feel like that's what I would do. This uh, Unless this guy's, this guy might be a real prick. Well, here's what I want to say. From how my dad and uncles operated growing up, they would always call out a dude like that. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. And there was never there was never one in my inner circle, but there would always be somebody on the fringes. Like, um, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, you gotta get down here before uh before the O'Malley's get there. Ron will take the you know, the good bedroom and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And meanwhile, he's the guy that disappears when the check comes at dinner. Sure. It's that same kind of guy. I agree. There's, there's one of them usually floating around. I don't like those kind of older dudes. Our uh our family is very my family is very big in any sort of that behavior. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get called out right away. No, you Everyone, talk shit about him on the way home. No, everybody'll notice it. And then at some point, probably three, four beers in, <laughs> someone makes a real. So everybody's aware. That's right? like you picking up a check, huh, Dave? Yeah. No, but it's never to him. It'd be like that. That's a lot like Foley not taking the last Snickers bar. So, you know what I mean? It's like a real offhanded side comment that fucking it's a one. two. Which that didn't happen, by the way. <laughs> there was no Snickers bars to begin with. I did see a Snickers bar in uh, Ireland, though. Who had a Snickies? I did. I had two Snickies. Yeah, Snickies. Two Snickies over there. Good for you. Yeah, thanks. But we got to wrap it up, gang. What a fun one. Yes. Gang, we love you to death. Shout uh, out Van Halen. Shout out to Van Halen. Shout out to Limp Biscuit. Shout out to <laughs> the new Mr. Beast. Huh? What are yeah. you just discovering stuff? No, I don't do that to me. Oh, this guy's supposed to be the leader of the pack. He's supposed to have his finger on the pulse. You know, Mr. Beast? What are you, nuts? Mm -mm. This guy's got candy bars and burgers. Come to a live show, gang. We we'll love you. See yous. you out there on the road. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.